There are many different extensions to the CPM environment. Uh, the one I want to show here is Epix. This is version 1.1 and we can see epix.com in the uh, second column. It's 3K. It also comes with some other files, the .dat files below it, uh, both 5K and other com utilities. Uh, that provide extra functions for the environment. It stands for Environmental Processing Executive. It was released by James H. Wharton in 1986. And despite the reduction in TPA, which I'll show here, so if I look at the uh, TPA, we've got uh, bottom right 60422 bytes free. And then if we run Epix, and then run that again, we can see that we're now down to 55305. So we've lost about 5k of TPA. For me, that's definitely worth it, considering all the things that Epix provides. And this is what I want to show in this video, uh, to show what it can do and uh, how well it works. It supports uh, the 8080, which is brilliant, and it requires CPM 2.2. It won't work in uh, CPM Plus, for example. Right, so a couple of things from what we can see on the screen already. At the top of the screen we can see it says loading environment and one of the things it's doing there is loading a file called eStart.com which is basic initialization script. Uh, we can uh, create that, uh, we can edit it. Uh, in fact, I'll show you the contents at the moment. And there you are, it contains a path command. Uh, so D0, A0, I0, C0. That's, a, that's the search path that it's going to use for commands. So it'll first it'll look at the internal commands, then it'll look at, on the current drive, and then once it's failed to find a, a file there or a command there, then it'll search through this path one at a time until it finds a .com file uh, to execute. You can also see that we're using the DU colon directory format or uh, directory combinations. So it stands for D, for, well, D is for drive, uh, U is for uh, the user area, and then the colon is the delimiter. You can use this from the command line here. And this makes handling user areas much easier. These are supported by the built-in commands, commands like uh, where well, the alias commands use it, uh, CP, uh, ERA, DIA, all those commands can make use of that. And that makes handling user areas much easier. But uh, on top of that, we've also got named directories. So PWD shows the present working directories, and you can see there's a mapping there between A0 and root. If I use the make dir command, in fact, before I do that, I'll show you the uh, mapping. There you are. So we've got a mapping there from the left. A0 is root, I0 utils, C0 is arch, D0 is new. Okay, so if I load that in, and now if I have a look at those mappings again. So if I do dir utils, and there we are. If you look at the bottom, it's specifically saying i0 colon and then utils. I could do dir arch, and there you are, we've mapped to arch. Uh, we could do things like, what should we do? Copy i1 colon system.dir, equals system.dir. And if you look at i1 now, we can see that uh, system.dir is there bottom left. And we can alter that directory mapping on the fly as well. We can alter it at any time. If I edit, if I copy. Right, so I've created a sys2.dir using the uh, supplied cp command, the copy command. So I'll edit that. And then we'll change the mapping for uh, utils. So we put there. Um, okay, we'll put, let's we'll do it simply. These have got to be entered in cap, uh, otherwise the mapping goes a bit awry. There you are. At the moment, we've got mapping i0 to utils, and then if I use the mic dire command assist2, and have a present working directories again, and then you can see i1 is the map, is the uh, directory that's going to be used for utils. And there we are, and we can see our system.dir there at the bottom left. There is a slight odd thing with mkdir, it was just a bug, but uh, sometimes it doesn't register the last directory when you set the directories, but it seems to as soon as you run pwd afterwards. What I actually do, I create a little, uh, a little alias for uh, mkdir normally called me, uh, which I'm going to show because I want to show the aliases. So aliases allow us to take a command line or a script and, uh, and create a com file which will run that. Uh, at the command line, or run it through the command processor. I use the alias command, and I'm going to create something called me, and all it's going to do is going to do make dire dollar one, which is the first command line argument, semicolon, semicolon can be used on the command line to join multiple commands, and then pwd, uh, excellent, and then I 
and there we are. We can see that it's run make dire and then it's run pwd and it's run make dire with the system dot uh, dir well system file dir is the uh, default uh, extension for the directories. Well, the main reason I think they're useful is that we can refer to the logical name, say, uh, utils. But if we were working on something, then we can change the underlying uh, directory that it's pointing to by changing the directory mappings. So we could have a script which refers to utils and then use that same script for several different directory entries, which, uh, which can be really powerful. Aliases, although I've shown here how they are just been defined using a single command line, you can also use the mk alias command and that will take a script, uh, take a text file, uh, to create that alias. So um, it can be used for really quite powerful things because Epix comes with all sorts of batch, uh, extended batch processing facilities, uh, including the addition of logical flow commands, things like go to, if, else, uh, provides the ability to set and handle environment variables, uh, command line arguments, which I've already shown, as well as the ability to handle error, uh, errors returned by programs written to support Epix. So it really is uh, incredibly powerful. Right, I want to show the menu building commands now. This is really useful for creating uh, menus and uh, they're created from text files. So if I look at a, a text file, and this is a simple directory editor. But at the start of the text file, we've got a comment, a simple directory editor, then an ampersand to signify a new section. And this is how the, the next section is the display of the menu, what it's going to look like. Uh, within that, we can use environment variables. So we're using $S3 for the drive and $S4 for the directory file. So uh, once those are, are set, it'll display those. And then another ampersand, and then we've got a description of how, what each of the key presses will do. We've got uh, C, well that will echo new drive and then input str1. So it'll take input from the user and put that into a variable str1. That maps to $S3. Uh, so $S1 would map to the shell and uh, $S2 would map to the date. Uh, but uh, SDR1 maps to $S3, so that'll be the drive. And then F, well that'll enter echo new directory file and it'll input SDR2, which will map to $S4. And then we're going to do D, well that will be uh, running the DIR command with the drive stored in $S3. And then file spec, where it sees those single quotes, it'll print that to the screen and then take input and then that input will be replaced with that part there. For example, well I'll show it in a minute properly. P will show the present working directories. E will edit the file on that drive contained in $S3, $S4. And then M, M will run the mkdir command to load the directory, uh, directory description. And then Q will exit by setting the shell to nothing. Otherwise the shell will be set to the menu and it would recurse in that way. So let's have a look then. If I run the program, or if I show it to be made first, make menu dir ed, and there we are, and then dir. And we can see that it's a 4K file. Right, so now I run dir ed. Now you can see one problem is that the drive and the directory file aren't set at the moment. What would be nice is if we could set them from an initialization script beforehand. So the way I do this is I create an alias. Let me have a quick look at this drive. I've already created one, so I'll just erase it so that we can show it being used. So I'll create an alias called DE. And in this, I'm going to set string1 equals D0, and then set string2 equals uh, system, and then we'll run the diared menu. And so if I press DE now, and there we are, we can see that the drive and the directory file is set. Uh, so that's really good. Uh, we can uh, have a look at the directory. I'll put in that. And there we are. We can see all the .dir files on that drive. And then we could um, have a look at the present working directories. We've got just root mapped at the moment. But if I press M, we can see now that it took in system.dir file and then mapped those directories uh, as appropriate. But yeah, so it's a little example of how we can make an easy menu from that menu description. Uh, the environment variables are persistent, uh, as I think I've mentioned already. So I can come out and go back in to diet without actually having run DE. It'll continue with the uh, $S1 and $S, sorry, $S3 and $S4 environment variables that we uh, mentioned before. So that's the main uh, the main facilities that are provided by Epix. There are some other facilities, such as the uh, secure operating mode, uh, which can be uh, really handy. It allows us to 
uh, restrict which FH commands can be run, and this makes it ideal for providing remote access to a system. Uh, and if we want to write software to support Epix, then uh, it actually provides system calls which can be used to query whether it's in secure mode. Uh, those uh, system calls, it provides uh, further system calls, not just for secure mode actually, but for other things, uh, name directories, returning error codes, environment variables, uh, a few different things. So uh, that can be really good if you want to program something specifically for Epix. Uh, you've got a nice big menu, a nice big manual here, which uh, talks you through how it all works. So uh, that can be pretty good for getting used to it all. And, um, and overall, I think Epic is a great way of enhancing a CPM 2.2 system. Uh, lots of improvements, small, uh, cost of a small reduction in TPA, but uh, often, unless I'm editing big files or doing something particularly big, it doesn't seem to really make an awful lot of difference to me. Uh, it's great when I'm just manipulating files and uh, handling things. And, and if I do want to exit from Epic, it's just a question of quitting out. And then I'm back to a vanilla CPM 2.2 system. It would, um, it would create a warm boot. Oh, sorry, it would do a warm boot and then return me to a CPM 2.2 uh, vanilla system. And then once I've finished doing whatever it is that needed that much more memory, or perhaps something wasn't compatible with Epic, not that I really find things that aren't, but if there wasn't, then you can start it to go back in. You can even do this from a script, so it's actually really easy to, to come in and out of Epic depending on your needs. So uh, all in all, um, pretty usable system. It's got a few little bugs. Uh, I've mentioned a couple already. Uh, the DIR as well doesn't report the correct size uh, used or free space on big drives, so a bit of an annoyance. A uh, couple of things I would have really liked from it. Uh, I would have really liked if it had improved the command line editing, uh, such as uh, such as we see in CPM Plus. That would have been brilliant. And uh, it would have been nice to have a command line history as well. So those are probably two things that I would have really liked. Uh, one thing I would like to ask anyone though, this is version 1.1. There's a note included in the LBR file. Let's see if I can... I'll see if I can find it. Nine. Here we are. There's a note in this file that refers to Jim uh, fixing some problems with it and uh, providing a new release. I don't know whether that was ever done or not. But if anybody does know of a later version, I'd love to hear from you. So do get in touch. Let me know about it. Uh, either leave a message in the comments or uh, contact me via Twitter or drop me an email, whatever. Uh, there's also uh, lots more information about this on the associated article on the uh, Tech Tinkering website. So uh, have a look at that and some of our other videos and some of our other articles. And uh, do please subscribe.